Well, what are we up to today? Well, I've been shopping again. And I'm going to do some more mods to the Argo. Now, for those of you the uninitiated, or rather those who are not aware, I have an Argo, which is an 8x8 amphibious vehicle. Um, there's a whole series of these episodes. You don't have to pick up it in the, right from the start. You can pick up anywhere you feel good. Um, I don't care. I'm just putting the numbers on these episodes so people can find out what was in what order. That makes my editing easier. So, um, last episode, I think, at least in the playlist, uh, I went for a cruise on my Argo on the water and used my little electric water snake outboard um, or trolling motor. Works relatively well, and I've got about two and a half hours battery life. Now, my Argo has an alternator, so, and I put an isolation switch in to disconnect the main battery so it doesn't go flat when it's sitting. It occurred to me the other day that I could probably add another Anderson plug on the other side of that isolation switch and connect the Argo's engine to and alternator to my trolling battery, which is a big 135 amp hour deep cycle. So, being as I'm using Anderson plugs to connect to that battery, um, I figure I'm going to add an Anderson plug in the correct spot under the seat. And then I'm going to make an extension lead that goes up to the trolling battery. And that would mean that while I'm out on the water, it's easy enough to uh, switch over and switch the isolation switch off, plug my extension lead in, and I can charge my trolling battery. And if I want to run my trolling motor and my engine at the same time, I can put a double adapter in, but I'll be doing that for now. Um, I do have rolling around in the back of my head an idea for a fairly long trip that involves probably more than two and a half hours of trolling. So um, I'm thinking that, uh, yeah, if I can certainly charge that battery in the field, it would be good. And yes, before you go down the route of solar panels, yes, that's great. But that's only useful for me if I plan to either carry tremendously large solar panels or decide to sit at a spot for several days, which I probably won't be in this case. So, first jobs first, I've got to put these two Anderson plugs onto these leads. Now, normally I would get out my set of jumbo crimpers and just crimp these guys on. But we're going to be dealing with water. So, I'm going to probably use these as solder cups. And I've got tinned copper wire here in 8 gauge. And I'm probably going to actually solder these things in. Um, I know it sounds a bit crazy, but I don't really want to have corrosion in this. And this extension lead, if anything's going to get accidentally dropped in the water, this will. So, let's get our cables prepped and um, get ready to put some solder on those things. First task is to make sure that I have exactly the same cable length of leads. I'm going to run these through my hands, come up and I'm slightly different in length. I'm just going to run the other direction. I'll straighten these out, run the other direction and just double check. And I've conveniently bumped the camera so you guys can see what I'm doing. In actual fact, these will be pretty close. I'm going to knock just a little tiny bit off the black. And I think my flush cutters are a little inadequate for this job. But we'll run through all of this. We'll see how we go here. Right. There's the new PC21 roulettes flying overhead again. I think that's pretty good. We're pretty close. Close enough, anyway. All right, and normally to strip these things, I'd either use flush cutters and a bit of finesse, or I'd use these guys. But neither of those tools are going to be up to the job. So, good old Leatherman to the rescue. <clears throat> and uh, I've had a few too many peppermints today, so I'm a little bit husky. It seems ironic, but that's how it works with my body. <clears throat> All right, now you're going to find out why there are cut marks in my desk surface here. That's because I do this a lot. So we want about that much copper exposed. And we're just going to roll this along with a good sharp knife. And then we're going to pull that off with the flush cutters. It should just pop off very nicely. There's our exposed tinned copper. I'm going to give it just a very slight twist just to make sure there aren't any stragglers there. And we're going to slide that right on there. All right, from this, I'm going to heat this and solder it. And I know there's a, probably a million clams crying out in pain when I uh, cause a disturbance in the force by not crimping these. But 
you know, it's what I do. So let's get this uh, into some blue tack and we'll get some heat into it and then some solder. One of the biggest problems that coronavirus has caused for me has been all this hand sanitizer that you're using every time you go everywhere. It dries your hands out and it makes gripping these things actually nearly impossible. Now, these are nice sealed um, crimps. There isn't a hole at the other end, so they work very well for this. Um, I am going to use a little bit of flux. Now, I'm going to change our camera angle a bit here. I know it's a bit of a chunky traverse, but I'm sorry about that. Um, let's get a little bit of solder paste in here before we get, um, not solder paste, flux paste, rather, before we get started. Just to help matters a little bit, I'm going to need to get some more of this stuff. I'm starting to use it more and more. And we're going to get some flux core solar because, you know, never enough flux. And I'm going to use a Mr. Stoner Torch for this job. Mr. Stoner Torch Blue. And we've got a green one in here somewhere too. And we're going to push this in nicely. And we're going to start heating all this up. Blue Tech um, does hold up to surprisingly high temperatures, by the way. We want to get just a little bit of this in here as a temperature indicator. And that went in quite well, actually. Now, I actually need to find a way to secure this cable for a minute, so we'll be back in a second. The camera mount is now the cable support, but that's all right. So let's get this nice and hot. I'm going to put some heat shrink on these. I may, if the um, exposed copper extends beyond the plug, body because it's going to shrink the plastic is going to shrink back a little bit out of the way here in a moment we'll get this nice and hot and we'll just feed a whole bunch of solder in there this way i'm not going to be worried about corrosion and stuff now the blue tack is sort of losing its integrity a bit which it does when it gets hot as you might expect at this temperature but uh, which means i'm getting a little bit of solder down the side but we're filling this cup nicely got to extend a bit more solder there and we'll go in the back till we push that flux out all right now i'm going to let it cool off and we'll check the bond and then i'll do three more of these I've done uh, the rest of these connectors. Now they do take a little bit of skill and I'm better off, better at this off camera. Um, I tend to get a better result. Um, case in point here, I'll grab, this is the one I did on camera and I burnt the side of it and I got soldered down the side. No, actually, sorry, that wasn't it. No, that was done off camera. That was done off camera. Um, where's the other end of the black lead? I'm lost. Um, this is the one I did on camera. So, comparison wise, I do a better job off camera. Um, now that these are all cooled off a bit, um, I'm checking to make sure I haven't got solder where it shouldn't be. And I'm picking all the blue tack off. Blue tack, of course, once it's cooled down, you can pick up just with a dabbing action. And I'll pick all that off these bits. Yeah, there's a little bit of solder that's wicked down on the back of that one. I don't think that'll get in the way of the. Um, Connector, I think that'll be fine. And they're all in very strongly now. They're not going to pull out of these. But um, I could make some comment about pulling out, but we won't go there. All right, now because these are identical connectors, um, I'm going to uh, get my pre wired connector and make sure that I get the polarity correct, even though there is a plus and a minus on there. I want to just double check. So, Let's get the uh, other connector and change our camera angle. Alright, and I've just had a look at the clock and I'm going to have to race off and pick up my apprentice shortly. But um, we'll get there in a bit. Alright. Here's our connector here. Now, um, yep, there's our one, so yes, we definitely have it in the right order. So... Our red is our plus and our connectors are facing up. Even though I know this stuff a lot, it doesn't pay, it doesn't 
hurt to double check. So that's our connector up that way. So we're going to go down that way for this one and we're going to shove in that direction. And they go in past those little connectors and they just get pushed in from the rear, like so. Where's our black one? And we'll go and get a black one in as well. And we'll push that in this way. I've got to look down here and keep it in the viewfinder at the same time. It's a bit of a skill. I think we're in. There we go. We're in all the way there. There's our connections. And our red is in red. And so if we connect these together. The red should be all the way through. And that should click in like so. That's good. Let's do our other end. Pull our leads up. And I'll be in nicely in time to escape. So that is, yep, I need to double check that goes in that way, yep. Because they can be hard to get out if you put them in backwards. That's right, and let's un make sure the twists are even on each conductor here. Okay, yep. Just taking my time to have a look, there's no rush in this. Yes, that's good. Get that in there and second click there's our connection now we know that this end is correct so we will plug both ends in and make sure that our leads both connect and also are the same polarity so that's good we have ourselves a wire I'm going to roll this up so now we have an Anderson extension and I can pop these out if I ever need to uh, put some heat shrink on them, but I think they'll be alright. So it's good. So we've got an extension and we've got another pre-wired one for us, all in 8 gauge. Now we can go and wire it to the Argo, but before we do that, I've got to go get my apprentice. So through the magic of video editing, you'll see the next cut right about now. Well, we're out at the Argo and I'm on the helmet cam. This is a new helmet uh, that I put together with my GoPro gear. And I've got a separate little lapel mic with a wind filter on it. So hopefully you guys can hear me pretty well. So we're going to put this gear into the Argo. And I've got to do a bit of an archaeological dig here to get down to the actual battery connections. Which are covered up with tape. This here, I'm hoping I've got my angle right. It'll be interesting to see when I'm done. But this guy here is my isolation switch. Now, I did replace the battery in this for a sealed one of a similar capacity, which is half the physical size. So I've packed a survival kit and some tin of gas and some other stuff in here. So, um, what are we going to do? Well, the idea is I don't want to have this battery and the big one connected in parallel. Um, that's going to cause some problems. And I think I need to move my mic. Just a little bit. Okay. So if I have both of these batteries in parallel, we're going to have a bit of a bad time um, because the capacities are so vastly different. One's going to boil the other, and probably this one will be the one that boils and pops its valves. So I'm going to peel some of this tape off here. My plan, um, for simplicity, is to piggyback my new Anderson plug off one side of this isolation switch so that when the switch is isolated and this battery is disconnected, that then means that the anything I hook up to the Anderson plug will go straight through to the engine, but leaving this battery out of circuit. So it makes for a fairly quick disconnect. Now one of the things I wanted to know is how much lead I have in this. So I'm thinking, realistically, this might just have to live in here. I did actually hope to have it hanging out the side here on top of the fuel tank, so it's easy to connect whilst uh, I'm on the water. That being said, I'm usually in the back here when I'm in the water, so I can lift this up and connect fairly easy and just run this lead into the back. No worries. So that should run easily up to that. Um, I do have a thought of maybe running this lead underneath that, um, underneath the floor pan there and bringing it up around the back, but that becomes more of a permanent fixture and because I'm regularly changing the terrain that I drive on this, I don't want the outboard to be a permanent thing. It needs to be temporary um, so that I can remove all the bits and pieces. 
also means if I have it parked on a trailer for a while, uh, it's less likely to get stolen. So, what I need to do here is get my barco set of spanners and take this terminal off, hopefully without shorting anything out across the spanner, which I have stupidly done a couple of times, um, and on camera no less. Um, you'll see probably if you dig back in some of the old episodes, probably uh, episode 10 or somewhere around about there, you'll probably see on this spanner here there's a burn mark where I uh, touched across battery terminals with it. In any case, uh, let's get this terminal off and get ourselves sorted out. Alright, so I have found myself a 17mm spanner here. Now these are copper threads on here, you've got to be gentle with them. Um, so, there's a bit of shenanigans going on in here um, in terms of <laughs> these terminals. This might actually act as a washer to help it. But we're going to put this guy on. And that switch is currently disconnected at the moment, so hopefully we don't have too much trouble. What did I say? 17. That's the wrong one. 17 here. That's undoing. Let's flip around and go do up. Righty tighty, as they say. And do it up firm, but not so tight as to strip the thread. Should probably put some dielectric grease or something on there one day and uh, I need some more of this gaffer tape I'm gonna reuse the old bit for the time being but I'll put some fresh stuff on there that's mostly just to stop errant bits of crap floating around touching across those terminals um, I am gonna put some proper insulation on there I'm gonna get some paint on insulation tape at some point too but for the moment that helps just as a security measure and I'm careful not to have the um, gas bottle up against that. Now I have a negative rail up here that I can get away with, um, although I could just share a negative terminal on the battery, might be actually more sensible. Um, although that's positive even though that's black because that's the only colour of link cable I could get. That's our negative terminal there. Now crucially I've put my negative rail near the negative terminal <laughs> to avoid short circuits across spanners. So let's go around the other side. Alright, we find ourselves on the other side and the spanner that I used on this exact terminal has a big a DC arc chunk out of it. Um, now I've got my other terminal insulated. Normally I would insulate um, my uh, spanners, but I have the ter other terminal sorted this time. Having learnt from my mistake that you would think that I would have learnt from years of doing this sort of shit. Now that is a huge terminal. I wonder if this is actually going to fit. I might sandwich that between the main battery terminal and a little one here. All right. Now, one thing this does double as is this can be an input and an output plug depending on the status of that isolation switch. So if I then want to power an auxiliary device like my outboard directly off this tiny little battery, I can, but I wouldn't want to be pulling 50 amps off this battery for very long. It's not that big, but uh, I could run something else. Now, uh, okay, that's right, there's a nut in the bottom of this. It takes a little while to take up the slack, but that might be a bit of a stretch for it to do. I think I might need a longer screw, so it could be down to my screw collection to see what I have of the same size. Yeah, that's not going to go on real easy. I think, um, whilst it's not ideal, I think I'm going to uh, go off my negative rail instead. Because I think I've, I'm at capacity with nuts on that. Alright, let's get this sorted out and I'll be right back. Alright, so we've got these terminals done up again. Um, so we're going to bounce off one end of our negative rail here. So I think if we get our terminals untwisted here, we can probably hang right off the end of this one. Off our bus bar. Let's find our right size spanner here. Oh yay, there goes my spanner. And in the least accessible spot possible. Alright i got to fish my spanner out. 
All right, magnet on a stick time. Um, I'm glad most of this down here is plastic. Um, there's my spanner. There we go. These are strong magnets on a stick. I originally got that for fishing an axle out of that Land Rover over there um, when it busted an axle. The front right end half shaft. Pretty common thing to happen with them. Right, let's put my spanner clearly out of the way. Take this nut off. Now this is non-standard by the way. You'll see in my other episodes where I've done this modification. Now we want to just make sure that doesn't have stupid twists in it. So um, that seems to be the most sensible way to do that. Now I probably really should put a washer on this. Um, so we'll see how it goes on. But I may have to come back with a couple of washers and these on because this screw is a smidgen small for the task but nonetheless should be right now let's go and do this Oop. I may have just shagged that don't know if I've got the washers quite big enough for the task here but no that's on nice and firm okay now I can get little caps to cover this and I probably will do that to avoid accidental short circuits. Let's rescue my spanner out of the way. And I'm definitely going to need another roll of gaffer tape. That stuff's lost its stickiness from all the dust. I need to get into the interior and clean this out one day. This is all that pottery clay stuff from the Tank Adventures track. Nasty stuff. Alright, so... Now... Let me have a think here. I need to go and get my other battery and plug it in and see what happens. All right, battery time. This is nearly 40 kilograms worth of battery. Weighs more than my apprentice. All right, that's what I use for trolling battery. I have a little strap and a couple of handles I've screwed down on here so that this battery, when I've got a piece of wood under there, sits nice and flat. This goes off to my charger, my Victron multi-mode charger, which is waterproof. And this goes off to the trolling motor. Now, I can buy little Y-branch pre-wired adapters for those that work well. But we're gonna take this guy here and plug in so that I can see if this is gonna work. Now, we need to do a quick test first. I'm gonna grab a key here. I'm gonna make sure that we have no power before I hook it up. All right, so that switch is on. Let's turn you off. So there's no power connected, which means that switch is actually isolated now. Glad I checked that. Let's plug you in like that. Should now have power. All right, so let's see if we can start off it. Yep, we've got starting current, no worries. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'll leave those fans running for a bit. Um, I'm gonna go and get a voltmeter and we'll check voltage and see if it actually charges that battery. All right, so this battery was fully charged when I've pulled it out of storage here. I don't know what that was. Oh, a bit of old Land Rover tail, tail light wiring. All right, so, um, Let's see what our volts tell us. Um, I'll sit you right there for a bit and hop on here. Okay, so we're about 12.6 volts right at the moment. That's not too bad. Let's fire her up and see if our volts come up a little bit. Let's give us a bit of choke here. Um, make sure we are in neutral or it won't start anyway. Let's give it a bit of throttle here. Full choke. We haven't started it in a little while. We'll leave that idle for a sec. Now, I can't remember if this has the 20 or the 40 amp alternator. If it's got the 20, it won't put any charge in at idle. If it's the 40, it should. 
but we'll have a look here and we'll see. So we're about 12.5 volts there. Um, all right, what we might do is we might run up the throttle up a little bit for a bit and see if we get a voltage change. Actually, you know what I can do? I can plug the meter in right here and we can do the two at the same time. That would be more sensible. Let's jam you in here and jam you in here and see what we get. Can I do this? I'm glad I'm wearing helmet cam today. Let's put you up there. So, actually, I might just bounce off negative rail here and positive wire somewhere. So, let's jam you in negative rail. Um, see if I can get into the battery terminal under there. So 12.48. Now if I do this right, let's see if we bring our revs up a bit. So it's still about 12.4 volts. I've seen battery volts come up, but it is a big battery, so they're not going down. It could be that the regulators decided it doesn't need to be charged. So, this will be interesting. I'll have to see what happens after a quick run on the river with it. See if I can charge it up off the engine. Plus side though, is it does mean I can jump start the thing now um, with just a clip lead. It's not too bad. Alright, we'll leave it running for a sec. So we can run off that with just an Anderson plug now, which will be nice. Um, also means I can probably run some accessories. Um, that is the other thing too. The charger and whatnot over here and the lighter socket all disconnects with the um, ignition. So if I can plug into that guy, I can run those guys if I run a little bypass switch off the ignition. Which I might stick in that little switch bay there. The other thing I've got to do is come up with some way to detect water in the bilge of this thing. Um, and I've got a couple of ideas on how I might do that. Um, but for the moment, um, I think I'm just going to shut this thing down. Alright. Anyway, that mod is complete. And we can just quick connect that and chuck it in the back. That works pretty well. I'm going to go and put my tools away. Alright, we will be back in a moment. All right, well, I'm back inside at the workshop here, and um, I didn't really get much time to actually take this thing for a drive, and I do like to include a bit of footage in each one of these videos of me driving around in the Argo. So I might tack on some uh, old footage on the end of this episode, just to give you something interesting to watch. Um, but yes, I do have bigger plans uh, in future, and part of that will be using this mod. So we'll see you in the next one. Hope you found it interesting. And here's a bit of footage of me driving the thing.
strike that one. 